This is Simply Angeline, and I'm a future president. It's true, I am. Welcome back to Simply Angeline, and I am so happy you were here. Today's story, Sophia Valdez, Future Press, by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. Now, let's see what Sophia gets into and why she will become a future president. Sophia Valdez, Future Press, by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. Sophia was a baby who got things done, helping her family before she turned one. She and Abuelo went out every week to help elderly friends around Blue River Creek who couldn't get out and about on their own and with no place to gather were stuck home alone. Raking leaves, taking pets for a walk, or just dropping by for a treat and a talk. Sophia Valdez did as much as she could for her family and friends and her whole neighborhood. A dreamer, a doer, a real life go-getter. Most people like good, but Sophia liked better. Each morning, Abuelo walked Sophie to class. They walked home again along Blue River Pass. Making plans, munching cookies, abuelo and girl. Except for that Tuesday when Pup saw the squirrel. With a howl, Pup took off, racing all through the town. Over, under, beneath, and around. Sophia scrambled to try to keep up with the hollering man and the bellowing Pup. Up the squirrel ran to the top of a hill, made of leftover junk for the local landfill. They reached the tip top of that mountain of trash, which jigged and broke with an ear splitting crash. Ouch, cried Abuelo. He struggled to stand. A dangerous mess, he said, grasping her hand. The next day, Sophia walked to school solo, but it wasn't the same without her abuelo. This is not right, declared young Sophia, who glared at Mount Trashmore and got an idea. The very next morning at half past dawn, she planted a sign at the front of the lawn. She stood back and smiled and Pup gave a bark. Each of her neighbors had something to say about benches and fountains and places to play. Meeting spots, gardens, a basket for bees, a rubber duck pond, and a kiosk for cheese. She drew every thought on her map of the park, which was perfectly perfect by a quarter till dark. She drifted to sleep in her soft, cozy bed. Then bam, she woke up when a thought smacked her head. Her heart skipped a beat as she realized each one of her neighbors had said, let me know when it's done. They all thought Sophia could build it alone, but how could one girl do so much on her own? The weight of that thought made her tender heart ache as night thunder growled as she lay wide awake. Then dawn brought a storm and the gloomy sky wept and the heart sick Sophia finally slept. Abuelo baked cookies when Sophie got up. 
He gave her a bag full and sneaked one to Pup. He blinked back a tear as he hugged his Sophia. For courage, he whispered. Te amo mi vida. Sophia's knees wobbled. She felt weak inside. She looked at his ankle and quite nearly cried. Though she didn't feel brave or courageous at all, Sophia Valdez went to face City Hall. The mayor's office sent her to room 401, the Blue River Creek Department for Fun, which sent her downstairs to room 302, the office of duck ponds and cool things to do, to the office of monkeys, the department of cheese, the division of fountains and meetings and bees, then down to the basement so musty and cramped where all the town's papers were sorted and stamped. And that's where the clerk said what no one else did. You can't build a new park. You're only a kid. The words smacked Sophia deep down in her heart. Her plan was kiboshed before it could start. I, I think, said Sophia, I think that law's wrong. But her second grade voice didn't sound very strong. The clerk said, clearly it cannot be done. Do you have any questions? Sophia said, one, if you were me and if I was you and he was your grandpa, what would you do? I, well, said the clerk. Then she said nothing at all. She thought and she thought, then she sent out a call to every employee throughout City Hall. The entire government of Blue River Creek crammed into the office to hear Sophie speak, but her words jumbled up and her cheeks turned bright red as a dozen emotions rushed into her head. Her heart beat so loudly she thought it would crack. The crowd leaned in closer, Sophia leaned back. Then her arm brushed the edge of the old cookie sack. And that was the moment when Sophia first knew. Being brave means doing the thing you must do. Though your heart cracks with fear, though you're just in grade two. She took a deep breath, looked the mayor in the eye. And though her knees wobbled, she held her head high. Sophia started talking. She spelled out her plan and why it all mattered and how it began. And once she got rolling, she had lots to say about meeting spots, monkeys, and places to play, and other ideas for things they could do to help the town elders and other folks too. She had thoughts on the library, thoughts on the zoo, and perhaps a way to combine the two. And... All right, cried the mayor. Go start a petition. If the town wants a new park, we'll form a commission. And so young Sophia got right to work with some help from her family and pub and the clerk. Then others joined in, not all but a few, like Miss Lila Greer and the kids in grade two. There were hearings and surveys and taxes to figure, then bulldozers, cranes, and a blue bigger digger. They all built that park. That's how it got done, with the hard work of by and for everyone. But it began with the dream of one person, just one, who laced up her shoes and then led the way to help Blue River Creek get a new place to play. Now, every evening till long after dark, the town comes together at Citizens Park. They all hold this truth to be self-evident that Sophia Valdez could grow up to be president. Until then, Sophia, that real-life go-getter, helps Blue River Creek get better and better.
the end. So what did you think? I thought it was pretty good. You can check the link in the description below to buy and also my Google Doc. I will see you next time on Simply Angelane. Bye.